Look, we're going into the first map. This is a best of two, as are all these matches. And the first map is going to be Dust 2 here. So good, good stuff. Off we go. Take it away, Ryan. I think the biggest point, just before we kind of dive straight into the action, though, is to mention that Ufrag, we talked about the kind of contested finishes, those 9th to 12ths. This is by far the most they've ever practiced running up to a UK LAN event. So Ufrag, they are on form right now. They are really kind of on top of their game. Rasta Gaming, they have their work cut out for them. And clustering up towards the top mid is certainly a bit of a different T-side pistol strategy. But let's see if it is going to pay off as they begin their journey straight down through short, venturing forward into the land of the unventured before, right where their teammates have never quite experienced. Zacti is going to find himself the first headshot on towards Dom. So good start. But Pommy and Co are going to be pushing in from behind and they are in a bit of a sandwich. Yeah, this is going to be tough for them to fight their way out of. Yeah, and I don't even seem to realize that Decoy is right behind him. He's just going to sneak right in. No one's holding the angle. How do they not hear the footsteps? He gets himself two, and that's just detrimental. The bomb is going to be dropped now for the CTs, in which there are two of. Cray here just tapping away. He's going to be able to get a bit of damage, but finally going to be traded back from Zati. But still, a 1v1 in play. And the fact of the matter is that Rasta completely allowed that flank, did not react to the footsteps, and now Zati, oh, he's going to actually clean it up. Somehow, against all odds, they actually managed to pick up the pistol after what was a, a bit of a scary start. And it will be going 1-0 in their favour. You know what? Praise be to Rasta Gaming, boys, because that's the pistol round. That's exactly the start they were looking for. You can't take it away from them, right? We were, we kind of knocked on them pretty hard. We pretty much said that this was almost going to be a stomp harder than the previous BF Best of Two was. So for them to get the pistol round, it's at least setting the wheels in motion for something perhaps a little bit more of the positive sort of mindset. But who knows? It is going to be Euphrag, of course, now looking to kind of make the best of things with these UMPs. They do have... That CZ on towards Dom as well with the Kevlar, but as we mentioned, it is just those USPs, the 5-7 on Cray. Don't really have too much to really kind of scream behind. It should just be Rasta Gaming taking some longer, more withdrawn fights, not allow too much damage to be inflicted. Looking at you, Yano, just step back for a second, my friend. Don't want to get mm -hmm. knocked down too low, 17 HP. But it should just be Rasta yeah, taking these long fights, you know, looking to play to their advantages and from there keeping it clean. Yep, Dom, though, gets a first blood over in middle. He's going to be able to deny Quartz from crossing that angle, but the smoke, it's not going to be good enough. He can peek out on top of it with the support from Pommy as well over in B. They can just spray them down from the doors. Great stuff so far from Ufrag. They've not even lost a player yet. And with Hayden and Psychic left, they're going to have to pick up the pieces of a fallen round. Cray is playing close. His pistol is going to be great at that range. He peeks out, but the damage is going to expose his position. But no kill coming through. If you try and nade him, but it's not really going to be enough here. Ufrag just playing this one fairly safe after those first three kills. And it seems like the round is going to be going heavily in their favor now as Rasta attempt to try and retrieve this bomb dropped in middle. Decoy going to be holding there. Should be hype as well, but you know, we're going to go with what we've got as well. Singing to the same old name trend. Going to refer to him as Decoy. If he wants to kind of let himself be visualized as a decoy, then you know what? They say you are what you eat, and Decoy well, seems to be living up to that trend somewhat. Yep, just Four to a one for him. technical pause, though. They got their yeah, rate set uh, wrong or something. Yeah, something, something rate related. So that's uh, a bit of a unfortunate one but it will give an opportunity for them to pause of course as mentioned very solid start you got you know decoy and the rest of the boys looking to disconnect now reset those rates then have to join back into the server also the raster gaming side they seem to be all well and good let's let's actually take a look at their rates and see if they've just not noticed that their rates are set wrong and we can't actually do that i forget status doesn't work for go tv that's just a bit of a shame but nonetheless they are just gonna reconnect back in and get things underway but yeah let's talk about the previous rounds raster they had the click advantage and they threw it all away by taking the early damage and doing exactly what, you know, the polar opposite of what we discussed was, which is close range fights right into the palms of pistols. Yeah, hopefully it won't be too long before they reconnect. I mean, judging by the way that most people think this matchup's going to go, I think Ufrag are probably going to make up for any lost time with a, a supposed stomp. I mean, we had that on Mirage in the previous matchup. But uh, not so much on Cobbles. So tonight's been a lot of surprises. You can't necessarily count Raster out, but at least the general consensus is that Ufrag are probably going to have a fairly easy time with this well, match. I just think, I'm, I'm looking at experience, right? It's kind of when you, you know, the same thing in any match of Counter Strike you go, one of the first processes that we do as casters is we just look at down the list of players, right? When you, of course, you have your research on the teams, but you also have that second, kind of second layer of research where it is. Just you look at each name on the server and you go, okay, what do they bring to the table? What do they add to the, you know, the mixture that is this team. And I'm looking at Pommy, I'm looking at Dom, I'm looking at Cray, Hype, Adam. These guys have practiced as a lineup now for a very significant amount of time. They've had a bumpy road as teams. Yes, they've kind of folded in and out of the mixture here and there. You know, UK CSGO you know, always runs with that trend. 
But for the most part, they have got months of practice behind them. This is, um, as I was mentioned right at the start of the match, the most they've ever been able to practice on the run-up to a UK LAN event as well, which is another point. You know, a lot of these UK GT matches are almost previews to what we can expect to see on LAN at the likes of Epic LAN and the upcoming iSeries and such. Whereas for Rasta Gaming, yes, they have a level of practice, but when they, when they actually kind of came under the Rasta Gaming name, they only actually had a couple of weeks of practice. I think it was around two to three weeks, which in terms of Counter-Strike, that isn't much at all. That's actually quite a small amount. And then when you kind of throw in the fact that, you know, as players, they don't have much experience on other kind of strong lineups in the UK. You know, you're looking at Hayden and Yano and co. Like, you know, there's some fairly old names, sure. But then you've also got the young guns. Young guns, they can be unpredictable. They can kind of fire off a couple of cylinders here and there that you don't necessarily want to see. You know, I'm excited to see what Zachty can bring to the table. He's a very new player in the UK community. But then he's also going to be prone to making those mistakes. I uh, missed it. Out of out of interest, uh, no, I know he said it earlier. Actually, the in-game voice is off, but I, I personally kept it on. I'm, I'm definitely happy. I'm loving doing it. So. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's great fun. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I thought I think we just heard from uh, from Misty that it's off. So you guys, unfortunately, get to hear the beautiful voice of Pommy as he lets it known that he hopes the stream can hear him as he expends his love for his teammates. I'm sure, or something along those lines. Whatever it was said, it's at least bringing things back to the present. Though, you go. It is just going to be. Ufrag doing to Rasta what Rasta should have done just a round ago. Yeah, bit of a decimation here. A few players on Ufrag tagged up though, so it's definitely still a potential chance for Rasta to actually uh, get back into this one. That scout's going to be a lot more dangerous up against uh, you know tagged up players, but not when it's on the floor. Decoy's just going to drop court straight off the bat, and now Ufrag, they have the 5v2. They don't need to get aggressive. They can just hold their positions, and they should have this round in the back fairly easily. It's just a repeat of the other round now, Rasta really fighting up against the wall. For sure. Like it, Gignano. I mean, they can try and sneak out on towards A here. You know, that's certainly kind of a meritable attempt, but unfortunately in Counter-Strike, one of the things you always find yourself doing is when you are in this kind of hole of a round where you have to try and you know, climb foot by foot out of it, there's only so much you can do. And for them, yeah, I think the best decision they could have made is just to try and walk on out, see if they can maybe play for a plant, you know, try and be the saving grace of their economy. But the answer to that one is going to be not quite today, Hugo. Unfortunately for them, they will be cut down. Ufrag making themselves money, looking to stabilize themselves with their foothold on their CT side. And arguably a side where they are going to be able to have that you know, more stronger presence, I think, as a team. Definitely so, but here we go. Ready to walk into the meat grinder of Cray. He's just going to be holding the angle towards B with the M4. They start to storm on in. He's just going to line them up. Two, three, four... Almost the A, he's going to have to pull out the pistol on that one. That's the issue with the A1S, always running out of ammo. Psychic's going to get finished off by decoy, but still, lovely clean round there from Ufrag, only losing one player in the midst. And 3-1 to one secured before Rasta now go into their proper buy. Pommy, going to be th throwing back to the age old reference, which I don't know if you, you might not quite necessarily get that, Hugo. I know you're not necessarily the most well-versed when it comes down to the, the inside jokes of the UK, but he does raise a solid point. You frag, they do run into a bit of a habit of the team kills and officials. Seems to be a bit of a recurring trend, unfortunately. No one seems to know quite why it takes place, but team kills are plenty. It's something that comes to mind when you're talking trademarks of you frag. Nonetheless, jokes aside, back to the present. It is that buy of Rasta Gaming. This is their kind of the potential moment where they can use this as a catalyst round to build into this matchup, but are they going to bring the fight? Or is it all going to be just a bit of a flop? Big bunch up towards mid, they've got the same old sort of standard T-side default, get pressure in lower tunnels, kind of probe around through mid door, see if they can catch a player there, and now they're going to go for that standard slow, short presence as well, which is all very scripted. But when do they go into their play? When do they go into something that they've rehearsed, something they've practiced, and something they know how to do? Yeah, but here we go either way. Up short once again, they're going to be bringing the bombs, so it's looking likely they want to commit. The smoke's going to be going down. That's a nice smoke on the edge of the wall that will at least allow them to push up a little bit closer towards the site. But it's all a big fake, they're backed off. This is looking like maybe a bit to be. They haven't really got too much tunnels control. I'm not too sure on the back off though. It seems like this wasn't their original plan, otherwise, they would have already had someone forced in tunnels so you don't have to re grab the control. Regardless, out into middle they go. Pommy's going to be the first to face. He does get spotted out, but he's still going to get naded, forced out of the doors, and spraying down into two dom supports as well from CT spawn and cray and not even going to lose a man here and with two players trying to pick up the pieces a bomb is once again going to be dropped in middle this is one of the main issues if you're going to go for a mid to b the bomb needs to come tunnels if you lose it in middle then you're pretty much screwed so now psychic he's got 20 seconds a dream and an unrealistic one at that
staring into his crystal ball, gazing into his future, trying to really pluck out what the best timeline for him to attend is going to be. But unfortunately, he can't quite find any positives. All he can find is the bloody unfortunate end as he is going to be cut down and Euphrag will take this one four to one. The economy of Rasta Gaming is back to that stage of licking their wounds, sitting back in a corner and hoping for the best to come that seventh round. As in the sixth, while it is not plentiful, it's not pretty, it's by no means comfortable. Deagles, T to 50s, Glocks galore. Let's see if they can at least make something work, some damage. Or perhaps Euphrag will just apply a bit of a team kill here and there to at least have something done to the CT side. Decoy though, denying the first over on long. Zakti goes down. Now there's a few more players coming out of lower tons again, but really with no utility, it's going to be, be made so impossible for <laughs> for them to get themselves out. <laughs> anyway, sorry, just read the chat. But, uh, dump, yeah, I mean, this is what you're talking about. When you don't even have a smoke investor in yourself, then what are you really going to do? Why not forfeit one of the Deagles instead go for a P250 and then buy up a smoke alongside it? Same price, really, and... Uh, you get a lot more options if you uh, if you invest in some utility. So it's a real shame now to see Rasta fault like this and such a basic mistake. A basic mistake that has its costs applied to it. Of course, it is five to one now. Rounds starting to build on up, but hey, look back at the economy of Rasta. It's actually got some serious merit to it. They're going to get going to this one, fully swinging, all punching, all screaming. AWP on towards quartz rifles galore, of course, with these. Utility, of course, to back them up. A quick flick from Quartz will try and run himself a quick tag. And I think that landed on towards Cray, so a comfortable start for the terrorists. And they're going to go back into the same old default. Now, one thing I really want to kind of keep an eye on here is, and I'm going to use this almost as a starting point for this, is over the next couple of rounds, can we just watch to see how many times Rasta are going to do this same thing? Where they group up in lower tunnels, they group up mid, and they go for a late, short presence. Because it still seems scripted. It's like a default that doesn't really have any effect. That's a thing. Because the well, it's, issue it's is kind of like at... in time is a commodity, right? And if you if you drip down time as a terrorist and you're not doing anything with that time, then you're basically it's like going to a store and spending money and walking out with nothing. The main thing I don't understand is what what is Yano's role in this? Spectate Yano, like what is he doing? He has his teammates on short, he has his teammate in middle, and it's tunnel, and he's just not paying attention to it. He keeps turning back and forth between it. If you're gonna hold tunnel, hold tunnel. But why is he looking suddenly towards short when two of his teammates are pushed up? It's stuff like that. It's a default the Rasta are trying to establish that really has no purpose in some of the roles of the players. So I don't know if Yano has even been given a role, but he's just sitting there and lower. And it's like what you you are offering nothing. He's it, no, no BM, but like he should be holding tunnel right now if he wants to make a default but it seems like they eventually want to hit towards the site that's going to be good obviously but just to look back at that default it didn't really make too much sense either way long pick going to be found and quartz he's going to drop decoy so now they can commit towards his a site splitting up through short but dom he's in position drop the bomb straight away lots of damage going off but he does eventually get traded so back into a four and three and rasta attempting to take the site with 20 seconds left the big thing for Dom there is you're almost just trying to waste the time of Rasta. It's getting them to really spend so much time in pit that they can then go for this rotate. The problem is that Quartz is the only man to hold down long doors, and he's the man with the AWP. He gets an easy angle to face and an easy pick on towards Pommy. And all in all, paints a pretty bleak picture now for the Euphrag side in terms of this retake. We're looking at Adam and Cray, the last two remaining, and you know, Adam's name kind of whipping out the deadbeat references, but that's effectively where he's at at this point. Just going to fortunately get up find himself in his grave. Cray is going to try and apply a bit of damage here and there, but it's very unlikely that he's going to be able to make this one work. Yep. At least a round found from Rasta Gaming after a bit of a shaky start. They are going to be able to secure two on the board and retrieving that double orb setup as well into the next round. Could be quite interesting to see. You don't really see that too much on the T side, but... It's not, I don't think it's too much of a handicap. It's a map where you can kind of facilitate it a lot more. I think if you're going to think of all the maps where you want to bring in a double open T side, Dust 2 and Train are going to be the two that are really up there. Probably mainly Dust 2, in fact, over Train. And uh, Hayden taking his AWP over towards the B tunnels just to try and find himself a pick onto Cray. Not going to be exposing himself. But, uh, still, let's see how this default goes for Rasta. Let's, let's critique the default, Ryan. Is that the new aim of the game? I think that is because it's trust issues for me. It's it's Yano not trusting his teammates on towards short, something that I was going to say, you know, just as you were discussing that in lower tunnels, but then also the rest of the team just not quite, you know, believing in their kind of friends and, and teammates, as mentioned, to, to just hold down these angles, take those fights and believe in them to hit those shots. I think you know, the, the biggest basis of being a successful team comes down to belief in everyone on that lineup. If you can stand together and say, you know what, I trust Quartz to land that shot with the ADP. I trust Hayden to find his quick flick you have much better chances. The problem right now for Asta is that I've never quite literally seen a team put in such big of a box than this before. You know, we always use that same old reference in regards to teams being you know, 
put into almost a constrained level of play, but this really is the pinnacle of that because Yano dry peeks in towards mid. The smoke before it even goes down. He's trying to go aggressive, but with no merit to it. Dom more than happy to oblige and take advantage of it. They've got themselves on the B site, sure, but Kray is actually going to be on the counter retake from tunnels. They have no idea what to expect. Psychic is going to fall. Zacte and Co will peek from doors. Quartz still doesn't realize that Kray's pushing. And it's completely not a bloodbath. At least Zacti on just 10 HP, just going to try and force that plant. That's the best case scenario for him. Get the economic advantage of the plant. But it's such a slim opportunity for him to retake this, let alone anything else. He can wide into yeah. window. They don't even need to retake. Yeah, I like the play, though, from Eufrag there in terms of pushing into the tunnels when they noticed stuff was going down B. That's actually, honestly, one of the better ways that you don't really see a lot of teams take advantage of is once you see the smoke go down mid to B, if you have a double B take, push your two players into tunnels. If there are any enemies there and you one of your teammates get killed, you can always just trade out that frag. But uh, obviously, if it's empty, not only do you get B tunnels control where you can actually play the fast retake in, but also you get their unspotted. So Rasta are going to walk into the site from mid and go, oh, B's empty, cool. And they're going to, you know, be caught off guard when suddenly Eufrag pushed two players back into the site. So a nice reactive play there from Eufrag, and uh, and a round's going to be pulled off of the bat uh, off of the back of it as well. So going into this one, Rasta's money is a little bit lower, but look at that flick from Decoy taking down Hayden straight away, and already a two-man deficit here for the T side. At least that smoke is down towards mid, though. That's the positive I'm looking at right now, Hugo. They're not peeking, even though they've got that smoke down. That's good. Get themselves to upper tunnels. Another kind of best case kind of play for them. They're just trying to force their way out where they can. They're going to drop a smoke on their exit. That's going to bloom, but again, they're peeking before that smoke actually is going to pop off, which nullifies the presence of that, meaning that it is going to be a quick trade, a trade that does not favor them. Of course, is going to pick up that second, but then you have to kind of cop back on towards Adam's position. This is where the smoke that the T-size laid down actually helps the CTs. Because look at Adam, he's playing right into it, gets one and gets a double kill. And a lot of that comes down to that smoke. Yeah, they weren't able to spot him out there and he got a perfect angle onto the first player on the site. So, Eufrag, 7-2. It's, I mean, despite Rasta only having two rounds, this doesn't feel like a stomp just yet. It just feels like Rasta are kind of on a bit of a slow burn and they're yet to get into the game. The issue is it's going to start to pile up now as despite Rasta getting the bomb plant, they're still not going to be able to buy because of the reset a couple of rounds ago. So their money's going to be significantly lowered for the time being, but a buy will be coming out in the next round. Even so, Eufrag, 8-2 likely after this. And uh, that's when things start to get a little bit scary for Rasta, considering they are on that T side. Almost the collateral there, though, from the decoy. He's going to be able to line up three. <laughs> and the collateral after it. He uh, he tagged the second player through the first player, on the first shot at least. But good stuff there. 8-2, to two, and now the buy that we talked about coming from Rasta. I don't know if you, if you know much about cars, Hugo, but for me, you know, what comes to mind when I think of Rasta Gaming is this almost like, it's kind of like an old Ford Cortina, the kind of 1970s. It, it ticks along and it has a, a, a nice kind of ring to it and everyone's kind of they want to support them and they kind of like the car but eventually after time they will begin to age and they will begin to fall on over that's where i feel like rest are at right now i feel like they're putting up a bit of a fight and everyone kind of likes to be behind them but eventually there's going to be another car that comes along a supercar perhaps that just rolls on past and outclasses them Eufrag right now eight to two i can't imagine anything else but Eufrag just hammering this one home yeah it's looking that way at least we can uh spectate the change though if there is any or if Rasta's just going to get pummeled or if you know they get that potential comeback eventually I don't, I don't really know I don't know enough about Rasta as a team to really make a, a fair decision all I've been told is they're not really going to be doing very well but it really does just come down to the match let's let's see and Adam fast aggression over towards long bit of aggression on towards B already two picks found and without a single trade from Rasta this is the issue is sometimes with setting up a default is if you miss your holding frag you're not going to be able to trade it so a three on three going to be in play bomb is down for the CTs but the rest of the team is just pushing up short trying to deny some of these players still left over towards the A site but decoy he's having none of it already taken down this first and he knows exactly where quartz is playing as well i think that's going to be the biggest thing at this point dust to a map that is purely based on angels and the most part so much reliance on this unfortunately for Rasta, unable to really make it happen great i'm gonna find another one towards yano leaving quartz now perched upon short diving into lower tunnels where pommy is oh sitting there cheese in hand trap on the other as the mouse walks right on through yeah, great stuff again. And with our bomb plant from Rasta, we're also seeing this economy come back to haunt them. Yet again, it's going to be an eco, and it seems that half their rounds have been eco so far. So, again, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of potential for Rasta to pick anything up in these ecos. Eufrag are just playing them perfectly. They're not getting too aggressive. They're not losing players early on, and they're not overpeaking or over pushing down middle, which is where pistols are going to be great at. So, it's uh, it's a shame to see Rasta be kind of put in this corner here. 
and not have any potential to pick up anything on these rounds. Exactly does get one with a deagle. But other than that, I don't see Psychic doing too much over in mid. I would love to know the veto and how we got to Dust 2, because I feel like Dust 2 has to be a pick of you, Frag. Um, because if Rasta picked Dust 2, then it's, it shows some very interesting thought processes. So I'm hoping we can get someone kind of whispering in our ears the veto very, very soon if they can find that one out for us, just perhaps for half time or something. Because, you know, I'm looking at Dust2 and going, their best chance is whatever the second map is going to be. But Dust2, it just doesn't feel like it's a, a, even a fair situation for us to be in. You're, you're literally putting two different tiers of players in the server and saying, play CS. It's like saying, okay, Fnatic, go and play up against a, I don't know, a, a tier three lineup. Perhaps not the best example, but I think you get the gist. Dust2 is a map where it comes down to aim, comes down to experience, comes down to the raw ability of these players to tap those heads and be able to make the right quick one second decisions. It's it's on paper, Rasta are going to try and prove that they can do that, but in reality, it's going to take time. We, maybe in a couple of months, maybe in a couple of months, I can stand on a stage and I can scream their name as they try and get themselves into UK Masters, they try and upset these matches and we can be screaming them then. But in the context of Dust2, not so much. The biggest thing we need to see from them now is almost a bit of a learning curve, right? They need to get out of this default. I think that's the biggest thing. Get out of this same old default where they do something towards mid with no real gain. They need to try and, you know, maybe just to do an execute on towards A, try and work something from long, but perhaps even a bit of a fake through a mid to B smoke from A long and then push out towards long. Use their spawns. That's something else I think that comes to mind is they've got B spawns right now. They've got two B spawns, so go aggressive on that front, perhaps try and force the pick. But something different that plays into their hand, plays into the unpredictability of the fact of also, you frag don't know how Rasta are going to play. They're just relying on Rasta playing in these defaults. There's a very two-sided thing to this. It's a very double-edged sword. Rasta right now, though, very much on just one side of things. Look at the position held by Pommy this round. I like this middle peak, this uh, double peak into middle, sorry, from Pommy and his teammate as well with the AWP. He's going to be able to catch out a couple of kills already. And with one trade coming the way of Rasta, nice double play at least, but it won't be enough. Maybe be into a four on three. Pom is still down for the tees though, and obviously they have plenty of time as that engagement went on very, very early in the round. But already we see a bit of a shift from Ufrag. They've not actually rotated anyone back towards his B site and instead just left Cray solo. But in this position, this is going to be great for one or two kills for free without any of the T's even realizing it's a, it's a position that's not often checked. But I feel like they're going to seek their way in. They should at least be checking it or Molotov on this one out. Flash going to go in. Nice work there. Cray gets one. So much damage on the Quartz, but he just has a reactive flick to take him down instead. So it's a three on two, but Quartz is tagged. So Rasta, they now need to pull out something phenomenal considering both their players are on the other side of the map. He's also hesitant to get on towards the B side. Actually spent a good 10, 15 seconds or so almost. What felt well, probably not that long, but a good amount of time nonetheless actually just contemplating whether he wants to cross or not, which actually kind of really runs out of time. We talk about kind of that clock being a commodity. It's like almost gold. You're trading it on the market and it almost sounds silly to say that you're going to be standing still and giving someone gold for no apparent reason, no give back. And I think that sums up kind of how time works in Counter-Strike as well. They are going to get that bomb down though, so that's going to kind of extend the clock for them almost, but Quartz on 12 HP and Molotov towards Window will at least buy him some time. But Ufrag have also had that kind of play into their favor where now they can group up for this retake. They've got those two rifles, they've got three three flashes, they are going to bit by bit be expended. The pop on off, Quartz is going to land the flick on towards Dom. Unfortunately, can't quite get the follow-up, leaving Adam in a one versus one against Hayden. He's going to close that one down. One HP though, in fairness. Yeah, very, very low, but Ufrag are going to be able to pick it up. At the end of the day, this is just seeming like a, a bit of a biased map, I guess, you know? Uh, similar to that of Mirage, except this is just feeling like a lot slower. Rasta really taking their time with the takes and not working out for them at all. But obviously there is a second map to come back on. Not that this is over just yet, but it's very, very close to being. And Rasta are going to have to do something pretty phenomenal if they want to somehow pull this one back. The thing that is great about Rasta though, and I feel like that's something that we haven't necessarily been able to explore too much because it has been a bit of a struggle for them, is that they've, I feel like they've got the foundations to build something. They seem to be a, a lineup that gets on well, they seem to be able to play with each other, they seem to be willing to practice. They just need to be pointed in the right direction. You know, bear in mind, for example, we look at the AWP of Quartz. He's been landing this tag down mid on towards Cray nearly every round. That's already a, you know, a good sign, at least in terms of kind of making the best out of what you've got, making the best out of the tools you've got in your hand. But I think for Rasta, it is just a level of improvement, kind of clocking what's going on. And I think, you know, they're not a lineup that you can write off for the future. They're just a lineup that has to be written off in the present.
Yeah, look at this play though. Already we've seen this aggression from Cray. He's pushed up into T-spawn. That's going to allow all his teammates to rotate as well. I'm surprised Pommy's still here and lower, just waiting for some kind of late mid play. But it's going to be the A site, which they want to be uh, attacking for the time being. We have obviously Adam playing this close goose uh, position, but they're not even going to check it. Finally, they will, but it's a too little too late. Why would you even flashbang that if you're not going to fully peek it? Adam gets himself two. Pommy's going to be dropped as well on the site. And now Rasta with three players remaining. Only one left on short and two coming out long into the arms of Dom who's going to be waiting. He's going to be able to get himself one, almost a second, and he has a bit of a support from the site as well, because Decoy is going to clean up that last player. 12-2 to two for you, Frag. Last round of the half, and the lack of bomb plant again means the Rasta are going to have a bit of a bad buy. Notice how they don't check long when they push long. They don't check Goose when they push Goose, even though they flash it. They don't check... They, they, about the only thing they check is actually mid, and that's all down to courts. But I, that's that's kind of that learning curve that we talked about. That's almost the, the prime example. You want kind of you want facts. Everyone always says, "Oh, don't bash a team if you're not going to give an example." There's your example right there. Check your corners. The most simplest thing in Counter Strike. Don't just gloss over with your crosshair and just shake your mouse in the right direction. Actually, check them when you're in a situation where you could get that pick. Because right now, that's the biggest thing hurting them as well. If they push down towards long and actually were able to do something, then we could have seen a fight there. But instead, double kills lined up for them. Similar thing on towards Goose. If they got that bomb plant, maybe they could have helped their teammate. Who knows? Ooh, Yano there, looking for his first kill of the map. Currently 0 and 14. Yeah, I know, that's a, a bit triggering, I, I can only imagine. He does tag down Dom to 50 HP, but he's not going to be able to get away with anything, really. We do instead see Pommy trying to take a bit of a fight down the doors. Yano spraying away. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Pommy's not going to fully commit to the angle, though. Instead, just backs off. Wants to retain this one-man advantage that you frag have, which is obviously the safest option, even though the score is so biased in favour of them. Better idea just to play safe than to get a bit too over aggressive and get taken down early. So Decoy is posted up with the AWP over towards long. They're going to attempt to split the bomb up through short with uh, both Yano and Psychic. But we have a couple of players left to deal with this. Dom being one of them. I think they're going to be more than ready to hold down this push. You know what though? At least it's shaping up to be a sensible push from Master Gaming. That's the one thing I've noticed. They're actually pushing up short together. Now all if they just check Yusuf. Yano, you know your job. Come on, man. Just check Yusuf. That's, that's what I'm talking about. At least he checked it. At least he checked it. I don't I don't mind what's happening now, but he checked the corner. That's a win for me. Yep, 10 seconds left though, Hayden's got to get a plant, he's got to grab the bomb first, but Decoy's not even gonna allow that. 13 to 2, a massive stomp half for you, Frag, and ah. Uh, Fairly clean as well. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what your what your what uh, hair. I'm not sure what your predictions are so far, uh, Flakes, for the second half. But I can imagine they're going to be similar to mine. Yeah, I really feel like we kind of we've sat here and we've managed to paint the exact same painting without knowing what either of us are thinking. It really is kind of at that point now, thirteen to two. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rasta maybe kind of nip out a pistol, but that's about it. I don't imagine them being able to take a buy round. You know, you frag on the CT side using their teamwork, and now they're going to go on the T side and use their individual prowess to, to tap those heads and really kind of apply that mental ability. Bear in mind, if we just take a second to clock on the stats, not to make a direct comparison between players, but Yano, 0 and 15, Hype, or Decoy as he's named himself in the server, 21 to 3. But let's see how Eufrag play this T side. They're going to go for a couple of long, fast players up towards the A site with the bomb still left in B. So that's going to force over a rotation instantly. You can already see Zacti's left a B bomb site. But now it's been made clear. The rest of the players sneaking in through the tunnel. Zacti is going to be too, too late on this one. They're going to be able to get the bomb down surely easily. The smoke goes out towards the doors. Adam flashing himself over as well. And Zacti's really uh, realized and gone, oh god, what have I done? I've rotated too early. And now Eufrag are going to be able to get the bomb down. The round is surely theirs now. They even have Dom still over in the lower CT spawn to create distractions and still harbor these CTs in this position so they can't even get to back towards a B site to retake and they do have the man advantage but the time is against them here. Yeah, he's just allowing that clock to spiral out of control which is even though Dom's not even wasn't he wasn't even landing the shot still you know, pays dividend as now the CT side know they have to quick on rush but it's going to be a blistering amount of frags quick succession headshots all across the board and a defuse for Aster Gaming there's the pistol. Yeah, surprise, surprise. They actually managed to pick it up. A bit of overpeaking from Eufrag, but you can't really blame them in a man disadvantage. It is going to be their round, though, and already going for the B90. Psychic's confident. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants. He's not going to make a decision. He's not going to ask his team. Safest option. It's a man of action. <laughs> yeah, he knows what he's doing, though. Oh, mate. At least going to try and go oh so aggressive with this Glock, and if he gets a kill, I'm going to be 
pretty upset about it. So thankfully, Psychic is going to just bullet him down with the P90. The smoke to... Did that just hit Adam? I'm not quite sure. But... <laughs> Nonetheless, it is going to be Rasta making himself some money, keeping himself stable, not really taking any losses up until that point where Cray gets a kill with the Glock on towards Zacti. And now he hops around the map and eventually he's going to fall to Psychic. Yep, almost flawless. Great round from Rasta, not giving away too much economy to the Ufrag side. But however, they still will be able to buy up because of that bomb plant in the previous round. So, going to be the AKs out. And that's the thing. Now Rasta have to invest once again. So, it's like, why do you buy SMGs if you're only going to keep them for one round? At least bring them into the next or don't up or, or don't go for SMGs in the first place. So, that is going to be one of issue uh, for the economy of Rasta. But at the end of the day, they are just fighting on the, you know, the, for the... Skin of their teeth, sorry. They're Look pretty much going to win player, every though, round regardless of, regardless of economy. I know, I, I, yeah, I saw it. Good stuff. That's uh, that's the difference between these two teams, right, though. And I think that's kind of... I feel like that's what you're hitting at right there with you know the comments you're making, everything that you're leading up towards. Like, you've done... For someone who... You made a bit, a bit of a point out tonight how you don't necessarily know you know, horrendous amounts about these teams. We talked about that a little bit earlier on, but I think you've done a really good job at actually isolating exactly where these two teams stand by just looking at what's going on in the server. And I feel like that team play kind of really also signifies and stands behind that as well. Yeah. And new frag, they're finally going to make their stance on this team side, dominating the opposition. Quick and simple round for them. Again, only one player lost, and Rasta wondering why it's all gone wrong. Only pistols for this, and they are just going to eco, playing for that 15th round, playing for the overtime. As unlikely as that is, like, you've got to admire their you know, resilience in that factor. Yeah, the fact that they're keeping on going, they're not holding back, they're not stopping, they're just going to go 100% flat out the entire match. Again, it's another one of those comments about saying they have the, the ability to keep on building into this as a team, but it's going to take time, and not just you know something that's solved in the case of a match. As Ufrag at least going to plow out towards long, Ray going to find one over towards mid, just near the tunnels. As Hayden on the cusp of finding a couple of shots, only able to find one, but good nonetheless. A psychic. Next in line to fall and the last to hit the deck, as it is going to be Rasta Gaming on what is potentially going to be their final round of Dust 2. Yeah, seems to be the case. I mean, this has been so, so fast this half as well, so... You know, only four rounds in, it's just taken about two minutes. It seems like Rasta, despite you know starting off well with a couple of rounds, has just been decimated ever since. And Ufrag, they want to turn that up another gear as they're going to fast push out towards long, split towards short from Cray. And the fact that he gets away with that with just the UMP is quite upsetting for Rasta anyway. So Ufrag fully committing to this one again. Two players left on the site. There's Hayden in the CT spawn and there's another one that's going to be caught. He does actually peek out, although to no avail. Goes down straight away. Hayden's the only one to frag. And two players already remaining for Rasta. This is going to be a very, very tough one for them to fight their way out of. It's like he's going to find that quick flick up on towards short, but Adam holding a bit of an unconventional angle on that top of that barrel. Decides to rotate back around and just hide within the boxes. And at this point, for you, Frag, why face? Let alone anything else. They're just going to kind of let the damage tick on over via the utility they've expended, the Molotovs and such, and just make sure they can close it out right here, right now. Don't even let Rasta Gaming plant that seed of doubt. The peak comes in from Psychic, does get the quick pick on towards Pommy, and Adam is going to fall, so that is going to be a defuse. Well, we talked about not letting them get the round. There you have it. Yeah, actually quite a surprise there for Rasta, but two players with such low HP just shows how close they're getting to only just scraping the bottom of the barrel to pick up these rounds. Ufrag won't take too long to close this one out. They've just been uh, playing with their food, clearly, as they are uh, going for their buy once again. Plenty of money for this one after that bomb plant. And, I mean, the fact of the matter is they've got a better buy than Rasta, even though Rasta just won the round. That just shows what economy can be like in this game. It's so, so difficult to hold on to. Already looking like Cray wants to make his entrance out through long. A very commanding approach from Cray as he tries to really kind of push authority out through long via the angle that he so dearly wishes to fight. Adam trying to make the best of the situation towards barrels at the top of mid. He's got, of course, the bomb on his back now. It's going to be dropped to him. Over from decoy. Psychic, of course, there to ever so close to be caught off guard. It's a very interesting play coming in from Ufrag, but they're still getting that pick. And now they're going to look to spiral off the back out. They get that second. They're not going to smoke it. They're, they're hungry for this. They want the shot. Quartz is going to find himself the leg. He needed the pick, but it's not quite going to connect. Now he tries to repeat, but there's no one there left to find Ufrag. They are going to sit away, dart over towards B tunnels, and from there find their entrance. 
and exert some real big pain on towards exactly he's got to work absolutely for that run goes for a spray down finds himself a double kill but even that isn't going to be enough it's still a 3v2 the molotov towards doors and i just on those boxes the smoke to go down as well adam is going to find that bomb plant and from there and right then it is going to have to be all in from rasta if they want to fight this hayden and of course they have to come in from door or window window is going to find itself pretty much molotov out Flash as well, gonna be so plentiful. And another Molotov. The sheer amount of utility they have right now is just insane. Yep. Oh, Hayden, so close to getting that headshot there, does get the tag off again. And now they're just gonna be holding off the time surely too low. Neither of these T's are peaking, and the, t the bomb surely just gonna be exploding in a mere matter of seconds. He tries to jump on the bomb to stick it. Both are gonna be pushing him though, and that's all that he can really do. You can't blame him for that. It's all over now, and Rasta, they're gonna get 16-5 out of the first map. A nice attempt at least and bring it back in the second half of after the pistol round, but nothing further will go. And uh, that is gonna be a bit of a decimation, right?